this the mailman? Oh, I do hope my fall catalog has arrived. Oh, Evan, he's such a gentleman. Please, do come inside. Let me unlock the door for you. What the hell are you doing in here? Get the fuck out! Oh, for the love of... Look, she's dumber than a bag of hammers, okay? If you want to talk to anyone, you need to talk to me. So what the fuck do you want? We're great. Just peachy. I love sitting in my house with my thumb up my ass. Tell Mr. King that sitting here all day isn't going to make us any safer. We need to take action. Well, he's town mayor or sheriff or whatever he calls himself. He calls all the shots. When he says to get the heck indoors and stay put, we do that. Everyone is keeping themselves safe from the family. If I was you, I'd do the same. You want to know more? Talk to Evan King. They're low-life scum who decided to use Arafu as their own personal amusement park. Oh, they're a fun bunch. I'd take a shot at them if I could, but judging from what they did to the Brahmin, I wouldn't live long to tell about it. Good. Now get out. You must be exhausted from all that walking in this horrible heat. Oh, and hungry too. Sit, please. Braley Ewers is the name. Don't mind my husband, Kenneth. He woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. Oh, he's such a dear. I must remember to make more of those preserves he loves so much. Oh my, I don't know. Mrs. West is probably whipping up a batch of her famous cookies, and all the kids are playing in the yards. It's so nice outside. The grass looks lovely this time of year. Well, I must speak to my husband about that. We could bring it up at the next Homeowners Association meeting. Ah... <gasps> I do love meeting so much. I think I'll bring muffins. It's nice to see a friendly new face around here. It's been a long time. The name's Karen Shenzi. Scared out of my mind! I'm glad he's checking on us, but until someone nips the problem in the bud, we may as well stay inside forever. He's a spineless wimp. His best solution to the family is to stay inside our homes and hide. What does that tell them? It tells them that we can be pushed around whenever they want. I'm sick of it. And I'm sick of King. We're scared shitless. Evan King's got everyone so worked up about the family, no one wants to set foot outside. That asshole runs the show. But does he really do anything about our problem? No. All they do is terrorize us. They taunt us to open our doors, throw bottles at our houses, and scream at us. If I knew King had my back, I'd step outside and show them just how I feel about their visits, especially after this last attack. Sure, go. Just like everyone else.
What did they tell you? Everyone okay? The family must have gotten to them in the last attack. Sons of bitches. Damn it! If only we had more men, we could stand up to them. I'm sick of them terrorizing this town. Wait a minute. When you searched the West's place, did you find their son Ian's body? This has to be the work of the family. I've caught that weirdo leader of theirs talking to Ian down by the river. Look, I know I've asked a lot of you already, but you have to find that kid. He deserves better than all this. Bite marks on their necks. That's the strangest thing I've ever heard. The family must have attack dogs with them or something. Oh, this is all I needed right now. What am I going to do? They'll keep coming back until all of us are dead. Thanks, kid. You're all right. Next time I see the family, there's going to be hell to pay.
Not here to try and steal my secrets, are you? Good. I was afraid I was going to have to abandon my lab here. That would mean starting all over again. It's not easy trying to make Ultra Jet, you know. I suppose you could say that. Ultra Jet is almost double the potency of Jet. Perfect for ghouls. Jet barely affects us, you see. Only trouble is, it's almost impossible to gather the ingredients together. Say, you might be able to help me with that. It takes three things to make Ultra Jet. Two of the ingredients I got plenty of. The other one is a little harder to find. Sugar bombs. I distill it down to its base contents and add that to the formula, then presto, Ultra Jet. For every box of sugar bombs you bring me, I'll pay you 15 caps. So, you in? Nope. It's 15 each. You wanna do it or what? Good. Now get going. I have a ton of preparation to do. So, what did you bring me? He is my assistant and my backup, in case things get rough. I wouldn't mess with him if I were you. Sure, I stay away from them and they don't bother me. It's a good relationship. They live somewhere east of here. If you're feeling foolish, I think there's an underground way through their place, deeper into the metro station here. Good. Good. There's more out there, so go and find it. You looking for a problem? Don't even think of breaking into that.
Whoa, whoa, slow down there. This area is off limits to everyone but the family. Where the hell do you think you're going? Sounds like an interesting problem. Let me take a hundred of those off your hands. You know, lighten the load. I suggest taking the door around the corner if you want to get where I think you're going. You'll find it unlocked in a moment. If I were you, I'd speak to Vance before you poke around too much. You can usually find him on the mezzanine overlooking the common area. We are a badass gang, and we don't take shit from nobody. We also don't like nosy assholes who creep around asking too many stupid questions. This lovely hole in the ground is Moresti, the headquarters of the family. Just remember, I got my eyes on you. We all do. Watch it, will you?
I heard guns. What's going on? Who are you? Maybe that's because I don't want to be found. I guess I shouldn't be surprised that you're here. I figured Evan King would get someone to track me down, sooner or later. You think I don't know that? You think I don't know what I did? I killed them! My own parents! It was the fucking hunger. That thing that's haunted me my entire life. You must think I'm some sort of monster. There's something inside me, something completely messed up. I'm a mutant, a freak. The only person I was ever able to talk to is my sister Lucy and she's gone. No one gives a shit about me except Vance and the family. Can't you understand that? He's dead? You killed him? But he was my only chance to understand what the hell is happening to me! She... she really misses being home and she's asked about me in here a lot. I think I had it all wrong. I shouldn't have come here. I bet Lucy is feeling just as bad as me. Go back to Arfu and tell Evan King that I'm coming home. I have a few things to pack and I want to say my goodbyes to this place alone.
want something? Any luck finding out how Rivet City Try asking around a bit. You never know who's collected a lot of information, do you? Absolutely. Good hunting. Take care. It's a big wasteland. But you know that better than me, right?
hope things are going well for you today, sir. for you, friend. See you soon, drunkie. Come back soon. It's locked, bro. I sure am, Sonny. What have you got for me? Well, all right. Let me count out your caps. Well, back to work. Hero of the day. I know. I talked to Ian, and he told me everything you did. I don't know how you did it, but goddamn, am I glad you walked up that ramp and lent us a hand. Thanks again, kid. Consider yourself welcome back here any time you're in this part of the wastes. I've been saving up stuff for emergencies in case things with Arafu got tremendously bad. You're welcome to some of it, if you like. Sorry, the well's run. Come on back soon. I may have some stuff for you. Don't mind Braley. She's in La La Land again. Well, all I can do is offer my repair services to you. I'm pretty good with fixing stuff. That's usually because Braley breaks everything, thinking she's making a cake or something. Yep, take it easy. Welcome back to Arafu, kid. I'm glad I was wrong about you. Welcome back. There are a few interesting places around here I've heard about. I don't know if they'll help you or not, but you're welcome to them. Don't be a stranger. It's nice to have company. I knew you couldn't stay away. Thanks for setting me straight on everything. I suppose not. I was about ten years old and I was playing with Lucy down under the overpass. We loved throwing rocks in the water. 
We saw some wastelander trying to break open the Brahmin pens and steal one of them, so I ran over and told him to stop. He just laughed and pushed me away. When I fell, suddenly my head started to hurt, and my eyes got all blurry. It was almost like I blacked out. Next thing I know, Lucy was pulling me off the guy. I had ripped his throat open with my teeth. She said I, like, changed into another person, that I even glared at her and raised my arms like I was going to kill her. The Wastelander took a swing at me with some kind of club. I turned around and jumped on him. I tore his throat open with my teeth. If he wouldn't have done that, Lucy may have been killed too. I just don't know. Lucy said Mom and Dad would never have understood. She told me to keep what I did a secret and that she'd try and help me. Thanks to Lucy, she was able to stop that from ever happening again for years. Every time I'd feel the hunger, she'd hold on to me and not let go. After a while, the hunger almost seemed to go away until, well, I don't know. I really don't. I mean, I'm not totally dumb. I know they were in stories and all that. But who knows? Maybe Vance is right and vampires were just people like us who learned to control their hunger and drink only blood. I mean, vampires are regarded as feared monsters instead of hunted animals like cannibals. Kind of makes sense. Yeah, okay. It actually kind of makes me feel better to talk about it. Go ahead. I wish I could answer that. I really do. I don't even remember it happening. When the hunger takes over, it's like being pushed aside, like something else is controlling me. I can see what's happening, but can't close my eyes. I don't even remember exactly what happened until Vance knocked on the door. That's the weird thing. He has some sort of crazy sixth sense about or something. Maybe all of our kind do. As soon as I was with the family, I really felt at home for the first time in my life. It's like all these people are my real brothers and sisters. I don't remember how long I sat there on the floor staring at my parents' bodies. It seemed like days I wanted to feed, to eat their flesh. But it was like a little bit of me was holding on. Then, out of nowhere, there was shouting outside and a knock at the door. I opened it, and it was Vance. He seemed to know exactly how I was feeling inside. He took me under his arm and we left. I never looked back. Vance told me later that he was basically covering for me and allowing the family to... to feed at the same time. Since my parents were already dead, they drank their blood and left the mark on the wall. He didn't want Evan to suspect that I had done it. The irony is they were stalking our town to feed anyway. It's almost like Vance knew this would happen. Yeah, okay. It's weird living in my parents' old house with them gone, but I'll make the best of it. Everyone around here is being nice to me despite what happened, so I guess it all turned out well. Thanks. Sounds good. Come back and visit me sometime. Why don't you look where you're going? Welcome back. Have you been successful in your search for books? 
Excellent. How many are you willing to trade? Very well. Here is your reward. Use it well, and return with more books when you can. Of course.
Are you going to Point Lookout? I need your help. My daughter stowed away on the Duchess Gambit a few weeks ago, and I've been worried sick ever since. I haven't heard anything from her, but if you're going there, could you look for her? Please, I'll do anything to help. Oh, bless you. Her name is Nadine, and she left a couple of weeks ago. Said she wanted to see the world. Silly little thing that she is. That Tobar said he dropped her off at Point Lookout, but who knows what's happened to her since then. I don't know if you can convince my little Nadine to come back. Just give her this note from me, would you? Only that it's where Tobar gets those punga fruits he sells off. Must be making a good profit off of them, too. I hear rumors the place is full of swamps and killer plants, but I don't know about all that. She's about your age, and when she left, her hair was dyed bright orange. You <laughs> shouldn't have any problem recognizing her. She told me she wanted to go find her fortune. But I thought it was too dangerous. I should have known better than to say that. The moment I told her she couldn't go, it was just a matter of time before she ran off. Please, find my daughter. Welcome, my friend. I am Tobar the Ferryman, and this fine vessel is the Duchess Gambit. We're just back from Point Lookout, but it won't be long before we set off again. Interested? You look like a man who's been around the waste, so I'll cut right to it. In Point Lookout, you'll find fresh-grown food, mysterious locales, and treasures as of yet unlooted. But keep your wits about you because you'll find more than a few exotic critters and inhospitable locals. So stay here if you're not man enough. Ah, Nadine. Sprightly little tomboy with more curiosity than common sense, that one. <laughs> Caused so much trouble on the trip that I probably would have thrown her overboard <laughs> if she hadn't reminded me of myself at her age. I haven't seen her since we hit land at Point Lookout. But knowing her, I'll bet she's gotten herself in plenty of trouble. Down south, this side of the bay, there's a soggy strand of beach called Point Lookout. Oh, it's got it all. Ruins of ancient pleasure towns, mysterious swamps bristling with treasure, and all practically untouched by outsiders. But if you're curious, I could offer you a ride over to that faraway land, for a nominal fee, of course. You should have seen her back in her heyday, why we traveled up and down the coast from the Commonwealth to the Broken Banks. Good times, but these days she's not fit to take out to the coast. Too many spouts ready to drown her and too many critters looking for lunch. But the Point Lookout run is good enough for now. We've got a sweet deal ferrying cargo and the occasional traveler. Now, I'm not normally one to discourage an adventurous spirit, but certain events have convinced me of the value of forewarning. I know you think you're ready for anything, but the threats you'll face in the swamp make those super mutants look like playful puppies. So just be sure you know what you're getting into, okay? You still want to head out to Point Lookout? Just don't come crying to me when a mire alert is chewing on your guts. All you have to do is come back to me and buy another ticket. Just be careful not to get stranded short on caps, huh? Once you got a ticket, just head into the cabin and settle in on the cot. We'll be there in no time. Whenever you're ready, just take a rest on the cot in the cabin. We'll be at Point Lookout in no time.
Welcome to Point Lookout, my friend. The trip was fine. The weather's nice and damp, and everything out there looks pleasant as ever. Looks like nothing's changed since my last visit, except all that smoke I saw on the way in. Oh, nothing much, just old Calvert Mansion. Just a huge abandoned estate teeming with who knows what opportunities for profitable scavenging. You know, nothing much. I know I said Point Lookout was perfect for treasure hunters, but it's a rare day when you get a beacon like that. Depends what you're looking for. If you need supplies, head to the shop over at the end of these docks. Convenient, and I get caps for referring you. If you need a place to stay, there's an old motel further into town. The beds there are still pretty soft, even if it's because they're full of lice. And if you're looking for some hunting, there's a fella named Plick who runs a club out in the northeast. Strictly for high rollers, though. Good travels to you. <laughs>